This is Make Noise Maths. Perhaps you've heard of it. This is the Mordax data. We're going to be using it to explore maths. Everyone knows maths. It's the most popular Eurorack module in the world, and with good reason. It can do about a thousand different things, and there's plenty of videos that cover most of those. But one thing that seems to get left out, though, is that it's a powerhouse when it comes to triggers and gates. I'm going to cover five different patches, or classes of patch, I guess. Many of them are going to have multiple uses. If you want to skip forward, here are the timestamps, but you should at least watch the clock section as it sets up a lot of what's going to follow. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably discovered that maths can be a master clock by finding that EOC, the end of cycle output. Then you hit the cycle button and muck around with the knobs until you find the tempo that you want, and it works pretty well. You can hook it up to a clock divider and jump straight into some rhythmic fun. That's part of the trouble with people really learning how to use maths. It's so easy to get started with some useful behavior without really understanding what's going on under the hood. Channel 4 turns into a clock super easily, and so does channel 1, it's almost identical, it just uses the end of rise output. But how are they different? Well, it turns out that really those labels, end of rise and end of cycle, they're pretty misleading, and it took me a long time to figure out how they really worked. It's an example of bad labeling, really. When you hear end of rise or an end of cycle, it's natural to think that it's going to be a trigger output, it's a signal that an event has occurred. But it's not. Instead, they're gates. They remain high while one of the rise or fall stages is running. EOR, the end of rise, should really have been named falling, because it stays high while the fall segment of channel 1 is running. EOC is the opposite. It really should have been named rising, because it remains high while the rise segment of channel 4 is running. The easiest way to see this is with an oscilloscope, so let's take a look at what's happening on the Mordax. The top half of the screen is channel 1, and you can see the LFO rising and falling in green, and there's the end of rise in blue, staying high as long as the voltage is falling. The bottom half is channel 4, with the LFO in red, and the end of cycle output staying high as long as the voltage is rising. As I work through these patches, we're going to rely on this behavior a lot, so it's worth really getting familiar with it. So let's dig into this clock a little bit more. We know now that the end of cycle output remains high while the voltage is rising, and it's low while it's falling. That means the rise knob is going to control how long the gate remains open, and the fall knob is going to control how often it fires. Channel 1 is the reverse, with the rise knob controlling how often the clock fires, and the fall knob controlling how long the gate is high. For this, I'm going to use a pretty short gate length because it seems more clock-like. And math has CV inputs for each of the rise and fall values, which means we can have voltage-controlled clocks, and I'm going to come back to the voltage-controlled thing a lot. It's one of the great things about maths is that everything is voltage-controlled. I want to dig into how these CV inputs really work in a different video, but for now it's enough to know that if you send in a positive voltage, the segment time increases and the clock slows down. Send in a negative voltage, and the segment time decreases and the clock speeds up. It can be really interesting to have an event offset from another. Maybe it comes a second later or a minute later, but there's a lot of reasons you might want to do this. Now I've got the planer here, and it has a physical gate button. You can see when I press it, there's a brief delay before the drum sounds. Even if I hold the gate down for a while, the delay trigger shows up right on time. So what's happening here? Well, it's a pretty neat trick. Channel 1 has that end of rise output, and it goes high once the rise segment finishes. So we send in a trigger, the rise segment runs silently, and the gate only goes high once it's finished. That means we can treat the rise as delay time, and fall as the length of time that the gate's going to remain open when it comes around. Let's put the trigger delay together with a clock. Channel 4 is the clock, cycling at a good speed, and every time it fires, it's going to trigger the delay on channel 1. The clock ticks come out on the end of cycle output, and the end of rise output is our delayed trigger. The green pulses are the clock, and it's driving the kick drum. Now the blue pulses come in, and you can see that they're slightly offset from the green. Let's plug that into the clap. Alright, let's add in the rest of it as well.
Now you can change things up of course, and the fall control on channel 4 is the overall clock speed. The rise control on channel 1 is the delay time. And if you dial in a delay time that's longer than the clock, you're going to see it starts to skip beats. It's a little like a clock divider, but not very precise. Just to recap, channel 4 is our clock. The rise control specifies how long the clock pulse is, and fall controls the time between the pulses. Added together, that's our total clock cycle time. And each time it cycles, a pulse is going to go to the kick drum, but also to the trigger on channel 1, which is going to kick off our delay. The rise control on channel 1 sets how long that delay time is, and fall controls how long the uh, delayed gate is open for. And of course, it's all CV controllable. Now the trigger delay was really just a way of introducing this way of thinking about gates. In reality, channel 1 is just a monster when it comes to manipulating gates and triggers. Want to do trigger to gate? No problem. Change the length of a gate, extract a trigger from a gate. It's all the same patch and it's dead simple. Run your input trigger into channel 1 and turn the rise knob all the way down and the fall knob will control how long the output gate is. We'll dial it down to about the length of a trigger here. And then we turn it up if we want to output a gate. Now when I told you to turn down the rise time, if we turn it back up, we get the delay back. Now this next one is fun, burst generation or ratcheting. Here we're going to use channel 1 to output a gate and we're going to use that gate to control the cycling of channel 4. While the gate is high, channel 4 will operate like a clock, and its EOC output will output a burst of triggers. When the gate goes low, cycling stops, and so does the burst. And I've set up the oscilloscope so you can see the different parts of the equation here. The trigger's in green, and you can see that kicks off a gate for the burst in blue, and then in red you can see each of the individual triggers of the burst. So by now you probably recognize all the controls. Channel 1 fall controls how long the trigger burst lasts. Channel 4 fall controls the time between the pulses and the burst. If you want a delayed burst, you can use channel 1 rise to add in the delay. You may have noticed that it looks like the red trace immediately jumps high right after the burst, and that's a whole other topic. Channel 4's end of cycle has some additional behavior that we'll look at another time. For now it doesn't really affect how anything works. For this last patch, we're going to go a completely different direction. It doesn't use end of cycle or end of rise. In fact, it doesn't use rise and fall times at all. Instead, we're going to use the voltage inputs for all four channels. We're going to send in a bunch of clocks and just treat them as regular voltage inputs. I've brought in the 4MS quad clock distributor for this, and I have it set up so that one channel triggers every two pulses, one is every three pulses, every four, every five, and that's just being treated as regular voltage. And then I've used the channel attenuators to dial it down so that each pulse only delivers around one volt. It doesn't have to be exact. You can see here how the green trace triggers more often than the blue, which is more often than the red, which is more than the yellow. Sorry about the blurriness, but you get the picture. The way maths implements the OR behavior is analog, not digital. So really it just works by outputting the largest voltage that's on any of the channels. Since all of the channels are outputting about the same amount of voltage, this amounts to just outputting a trigger when any of those inputs are fired. On its own, that's not super interesting. There are way easier ways to add triggers together. But we're going to use the sum output as well, and that's where it gets interesting. If two pulses come in at the same time, we're going to add them together and output two volts on the sum output, while just one volt comes out on OR. Same thing if three pulses come in at once. They'll get added together, and three volts will come out on sum, and OR will just output the one volt. So we're getting both a trigger off the OR output, and also a control voltage off the sum. So let's get that going. I'm going to use the Queen of Pentacles as my drums, as I have through the video. And I'm going to fire the kick every time the pulse comes out of OR. And then I'm going to plug the CV from sum into the accent level for that drum. You can hear right away how it makes the pattern a lot more dynamic.
And we might as well add in the rest of the percussion while we're at it. And that wraps up this video. I hope you learned something about mass that you didn't know before. I'm hoping to make more of these videos where I'm going to dive into an underexplored corner of it. I'm still learning what I can do, and I'm happy to share it with you as I find out. If there's something more you want to know about, just drop me a comment below. But for now, just going to let the Queen of Pentacles play us out. Thanks for watching, everyone.